Scriplox here. Today's video we're going to recreate Stardew Valley fishing game in Godot. This game behaves a lot like Flappy Birds. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's set up the scene. So we already have a main scene and a fish game scene. They're both node 2D. We can go ahead and set up the display. We'll do 256 by 256. And then we'll do 1024 by 768 for the width and height. And then on the mode, we're going to do 2D for stretch. Okay, in our folder we have a texture called Fishing Atlas and one for Progress Bar. And we're just going to re-import them with filter turned off. The first thing we need to add is a sprite for the background. We'll relabel it background. We'll grab the texture. We'll offset it so it lines up in the middle of the screen. So the texture is 256. We're going to do half of that, so 128 by 128. And then we don't want all this texture. We just want the section with the fishing pole. So we're going to go to region, enable it. Then we're going to go down here to texture region. And we're going to select the fishing pole and the water and the progress bar. Okay. Now the next thing we need to select or create is the uh, player. So we're going to do a kinematic body 2D. We're going to rename it. And the player is like the little bobber that goes up and down on the screen in the fishing game. So we're going to get a collision shape. And we're going to also add a sprite to it. And we're going to add an area 2D for our detection area. So this area is going to detect if the fish is inside of it or not. And then for the uh, sprite, we'll go ahead and drag the atlas into it as well. And we're going to use this little green square here. So we turn on region, and it's, it's an 8 by 8 pixel square, um, but we're going to have to drag and drop the little uh, tool around it. If I can select it here, there we go. Okay. Now if we see it, it's on the top left corner, so we're going to... Now add the uh, rectangle shape around it, and we want it to be the same size as the, the little square that we're using. Okay, and then detect needs a, a um, shape as well. So we're going to add another collision shape 2D. And then we're going to um, add the shape to the collision shape 2D. and make it the same size as the square as well. All right, and the next thing we're gonna to need to add to the scene is the fish. So we're gonna also add another kinematic body 2D, and it's, it's almost the same setup as the um, player. So we're gonna need a sprite, except for this one doesn't need a detection area 2D. So we're gonna change it to fish, We'll get this one. We'll first add the atlas in there to the texture. And of course, we're going to use a little fish shape. So we'll move the selector down there. We zoom in a bit. OK. 
go, resize it. Then we're going to enable the region. And then we're going to add our rectangle shape 2D as well and resize it so that it's the same size as the fish. All right, what do we need next? We need to lock down the fish so none of the uh, children move separately. And then the player as well. We're going to move that. I didn't lock it down, so let's move it to make sure everything moves together. Put that in the, we'll call it the water, I guess. Okay, save the scene. All right, so for the progress, the little bar that goes up and down as you're catching the fish, we're going to use a texture progress. We're going to move that up to the top of the scene. We're going to use this progress bar texture here. And notice it has a highlight and a shadow on it. And we're just going to set it to 50 so we can see what half of it looks like. Okay. I'll move that over into the progress area and we want it to go from bottom to top. So as you gain more progress, it's going to start at the bottom and grow to the top. Okay. And I forgot here why it's not letting me resize it, but I'll remember in a second. And so I'm turning on the nine patch as well. Um, and then I need to resize it, but it's not letting me because I'm in the move mode. So I go back to the arrow. There we go. And once I have that, then I want it to fill in the entire area of the progress section of the background. And I'll make it same width. There we go. And then next we will add um, two static bodies. One for the top and one for the bottom of the little water lane there. And this is going to stop the fish and the player from going too high or too low on the screen. So we're going to make this a uh, rectangle 2D. And we can call this top. And then we can duplicate it. Call it bottom. And then we need to lock it down, same thing. And then drag the top over to the top of the swim channel there, or the water lane, or whatever we're gonna call it. And put the bottom on the bottom. And that way the player can't go past those um, squares there, the little static areas. And then we're gonna add one last sprite, and this is the reel. So in the game, there's like a little spinning reel um, as you're moving. So um, the, like if you've ever seen a rod and reel that has a little spinning reel part of the rod and reel. So we'll select that area from the atlas. Get it lined up. And drag that down next to the reel, or next to the rod. And one last thing is to 
set the pivot point. So we want it to spin around in the middle of the reel. So we'll move the pivot point to the middle of the circle here. There we go. Okay, now we're going to go over the script. So I've added three three uh, script files, one to the player, one to the fish game, and one to the fish. So if we start at the player, we have some constants. We have an export that defines the uh, scale of the area, so how big the, the green area that's detecting the fish is. We have um, some variables that hold how much is completed in the game and if the fish has been detected. And then we have two signals defined here one for update progress and one for real. And in the ready, it sets the scale. And in the progress, all it's doing is, as it's falling down, just like in Flappy Birds, it's saying if it's if it's if if you're not clicking on it, it goes down. If you are clicking on it, it goes up. And if you are clicking on it, it's emitting a signal that you're, you're reeling the reel in. And then once um, once you have that motion, then you're, you're uh, moving and sliding to that um, motion. And then the update percent complete, it's just saying if the fish is inside the green area, then you add more to the completion. If the fish is outside, then you subtract from the completion. And then you emit the signal update progress to update the percent complete uh, texture progress. Next, we have the fish. And the fish um, has some export variables. You get to set how fast the fish moves and how high up and how low down it goes. And there's a random number generator. Um, it has a target and velocity. And all it's doing is setting a random uh, spot for it to move towards and how fast it's moving towards that. And then if it hits that spot, then it recreates that random number and tries to move again. So it just kind of wiggles the fish around. So it finds that target and then it moves it to it. And then if that if it is at the target, then it then it finds that random number again. And finally, uh, we have the fish game, and it's just associating the two uh, signals that the player gives off to methods in here. And those two methods will the first one will update the progress, and the second one will spin the little wheel in a circle. Okay, now let's go over signal setup. So when the fish is in the area, so the fish is a kinematic body 2D, so it's a body. So when the fish is entered, we're going to associate a method to that. And when the fish is exiting, we're gonna associate a body to that, or a, a signal to that. So it created these two methods, on detect body entered, and I had them already written in my code, but we're just gonna copy and paste that. So it's when it's inside, it sets that variable fish inside to true. When it's outside, it sets the fish of value to false. Now we need to do a few more setup things. So we need to go to the input map and we're going to add flap and I've already done this here and then we're doing it to the left mouse button. So whenever you hit the left mouse button, it's going to send the flap command out. And then we're also going to go to the 2D physics layers and we're going to set one for player, fish, and boundary. Now that we have our collision layers, we need to go ahead and assign them. So the player is going to be on layer player and it's going to look for things on the uh, boundaries. And it's the detection uh, area node here is going to be on player as well, and it's going to look for fish. And then the fish is going to be on the fish layer, and it's also going to look at the collision boundaries so it doesn't go higher or lower than it can. All right, we're almost done. So let's go to fish and I'll show you. So these, these import variables, you can um, change them up to say how fast and how um, far the guy moves. So if you do the max top, max bottom, 
that's how far up and down he goes. If we set it to um, a wider range and run it again, you'll see the fish moves in a larger area randomly. And the same thing for the speed. So if you want him to go super slow, then the speed can be really small. And the fish will move really slow, so it'll be a really easy fish to catch. Or if you set it high, or back to 100 where it was. And then um, the player, we can set how big the little square is that catches the fish. So if we set it really small to 1, then it'll be a really small little green cube there. That'll be really hard to catch fish. Or we could set it to uh, much bigger and make it a lot easier to catch the fish. And you uh, might have noticed that the um, fish is a little bit too big, so we'll just scale it down to 0.5. That way it fishes, fits better in the uh, swim lane there. You also notice that the texture progress wasn't using the, the nine patch correctly. So we're going to define two pixels all the way around and that way that texture looks better on the progress bar. And finally, I'd made a mistake here at line 17 where I had a value inside of there and it shouldn't have it. So it wasn't finding that real um, method. So now whenever you click on the left click, it moves the reel around in a circle. I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe and check out one of my other videos that's linked here.